yeah, there's sort of that adage that like the the cast is like your insurance policy or something, uh, you know. And and what do you? How did you cast Mount Joy, and, and and what did you learn from that process? As far as the actual acting goes, we made sure when we cast people that we were casting people that knew how to act really well, that already had the talent and the training. Um, that's something I don't have personally in my background is to say, oh, go off and do this breathing exercise or whatever you need to do. I like to know that when we hire actors, just like I would hire anybody else on set, that you know, I would meet with them in the beginning and go over every line and just say, okay, do you understand this? But other than that, I'm not trying to micromanage the acting. I, that's why we cast them and you know, if they have to bring to the table what they're gonna bring to the table. Be in the room with everybody uh, I feel like it's sort of like trendy or whatever for, and maybe it's a byproduct of just making best use of your time, but like it's sort of the, I feel like more and more filmmakers will be absent from the, maybe the first couple stages of casting in the room and then they'll, they'll come in uh, once it gets narrowed down to more you know, prominent candidates. But it's amazing to be in the room and to listen to your, especially if you're a writer especially if you're a writer, to be in the room and hear your dialogue be read 50 different times by different people of varying backgrounds and, and uh, you know, skill levels or whatever, in different approaches. I, I, so I had the feeling that she could act, you know, or that I could, no, it was not conscious, but I, that I could achieve something with her. Not even, I didn't know which way, I didn't know I would have to manipulate her, I didn't know anything. I just knew that I could relate and I'd make her trust me at some point or make her like make me get her drunk on camera. I first started casting the project in a very traditional way, um, in LA, the Hollywood way, through agents, traditional casting calls and auditions, um, and in conjunction with raising financing. So I would attach an actress, so for example, Mia Wasikowska, who at the time had seen her one short film, and that's it, she was 15. Um, and then we would try and raise money, but she hadn't really been anything yet, so it didn't mean anything. And then she got Alice in Alice in Wonderland, which is like a $20 million movie. But then she dropped out of my movie to be on that track. So I, like, I did that path with Jennifer Lawrence, with, with a bunch of these kind of young starlets. Um, and it was incredibly difficult and frustrating and ultimately did not work out for me. <laughs> so I like played that game for a while. I don't know, it was, it was a great process and everybody was like, wow, like, this, this, she works really well, and I feel like, yes, she does, but it also, like, I feel like everybody can be an actor, like, by pushing the right buttons, you know, like, it's playing, it's playing, so, so, how do, you have to have that kind of, like, way of human connecting, and there's some people who are, like, just, you don't have chemistry with, you know, I, I, I that happens to me sometimes, or people who have, like, a different, energy and, and vibe. I don't, I don't want to make any audition on tape and, 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 and you know, I want to be in person. I'm old school in that way, I guess. I don't know. Well, casting is, you know, you can't, you can't possibly overstate how important casting is. So uh, the, the, the two people that cast my previous short a couple years ago, uh, Nina Day and Zan Ludlam, they're, they're two separate casting directors who have their own agencies, but they're, they're good friends and they, they work together on occasion. And you know, on, on this project, it was, it was a team effort. I kind of spent a year making this film that way, and then it, you know, it didn't work out, and the, the money fell apart, and I then said, I'm gonna go make this film no matter what. It's my thesis at NYU, I'm gonna graduate, I'm just gonna go make it smaller. And cast unknown actors, um, and made the film at a much smaller scale, and honestly, I'm so happy I did that, because I got to make this really, you know, personal, creative, different film that I would have not been able to get away with had I been beholden to Hollywood method of casting. We found people, we loved them. They were all great actors and actresses. Um, but in the end, now that we're kind of in the distribution phase, the movie turned out great and people love it. It's just that um, people want talent to sell it, to be able to advertise it or put a poster of a picture. You know, because otherwise, and if you do think about it from their end and what they have to do, it's like, how are they going to get just everyday people to watch the movie? And that's what they've come up with. So at the same time, I don't like it, but I do understand it. <laughs> you know, it's kind of a necessary evil still. You know, the great thing about Nina and Zan, what they did is they just have such, a, such an imagination with how they cast. 
I mean, uh, Ariane Labed, who was in the short called High and Dry, the second one of the three, you know, they, they had the imagination to, to think of someone who, at the time, had never done a movie in English before. She had, at the time, she had two film credits, Attenberg and Alps, two films that I just loved. Loved, loved, loved these two films. Um, but she had never done a movie in English, and, and they had found out that she was in town shooting a commercial, I think. Um, and they were able to, you know, get a meeting with, with me and her. We sat down, we, we talked. Um, but that kind of imagination is so fascinating to me that they thought of someone who, uh, you know, has proven herself as a, a force of cinema but in a different language. <laughs>